Hello learners, today we will focus on an aspect of sustainable soil management which we refer to as organic farming. What is organic farming? Organic farming is the growing of crops that usually avoids the use of synthetic fertilizers, what we commonly know as the fertilizers we buy from the shop, herbicides and pesticides. This kind of a farming is what we refer to as organic farming. The components of organic farming include fertilizer management, weed control, insect pest and disease control. We will look at each one of these factors and how it is conducted in comparison to what we know as the conventional form of farming where we use both, we use herbicides, agrochemicals and, uh, and commercial fertilizers. In the fertilizer management, as we know, is that in today the in today's age the population is on the rise. People are increasing in number, and so is the demand for both food and fiber. Remember also, as the population increases, so is the livestock demand in the form of meat. To fulfill these requirements in the form of food and fodder for for our animals. We need to get higher produce in our farms. Ideally, when we look for higher produce for our farms, we need to have fertile soils. Remember that we are also in an era where we have issues of climate change and land degradation and soil degradation as we will look later in this course. And these also influence the soils that we have, that we are in a high demand for food and for fodder well, at the same time, our soils are declining in terms of fertility and the capacity to hold higher yields. To get higher yields, therefore, we need to apply fertilizers as we learned in our previous classes. However, what we know about the common fertilizers that we buy from the shop, those that are made of, that are commercially made, they, are, they have the capacity to pollute air, water, and land especially if misused or overused. Also, they can cause diseases or to the extreme, they can make plants and crops vulnerable to diseases. To avoid all these problems, we use what we refer to as organic farming and we have various types of fertilizers in which we use in organic farming. One of them is manures. Manure, as usual, is a derivative of plant residues or human and animal waste, which has been which contains complex nutrients that are required by plants. Manures can be grouped into two: they can be bulky organic manures or concentrated organic manures. Bulky organic manures they are they are, they contain small amounts of nutrients. Hence, they require to be applied in large quantities. They include the farmyard manure, they include the sheep and goat manure, the pottery manure, and the green manure. We need to look at each one of these kinds of bulky organic manures and how far they can help us in terms of agriculture. The farmyard manure is as a result of decomposed mixture of, cow, of animal dung and urine which has been left as leftovers for a while. The quantity of nutrients that are in this manure, of course, depend on what the, cow, the, the initial cow fed, the quality or the quantity of the feeds, the feed composition, the quantity of the bedding material that, that has been holding it, so that influences processes of decomposition, the length of storage and the storage conditions. Usually in a hectare, in, in a 25 ton per hectare farmyard manure, delayed from cattle, it normally contains 150 kgs of nitrogen, that 5 kgs of phosphorus and 140 kgs of potassium. When we look at the sheep and goat manures, they are usually droppings of goat and sheep. And compared to the farmyard manure, they have got higher nutrients. Usually, they have an average of 3% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, 
phosphoric acid, which is a source for, for, for soluble phosphate, and uh, 2% of potassium oxide, which is a source for potassium. The other type of fertilizer we use is what we refer to as the crop residues. These are what are left overs after harvesting crops or after growing crops with the purpose of fertilizing your land. These, they normally have different quantities of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, and this is normally dependent on what was contained in the soil, the particular species of the crop, and when, how they are removed and when they were removed and after how long they were stored since removal. The quality or, or quantity of crop residues also influence how fast soil organic matter we build as we have seen in previous classes that it is one of the methods used to enhance soil organic matter composition in the soil. We also have what we call as a potly manure. The pottery manure usually con consists 3% of nitrogen, 2.6% of phosphoric acid, and 1.4% of potassium oxide. However, there is something you need to note about pottery manure is that it ferments and decomposes very fast, so that within 30 days or a month, most of its nitrogen has already been lost or decomposed. Therefore, it is not the best manure to use for long-term crops. Lastly, we also have what we refer to as the green manures. Green manures are mainly from crops that are grown at a vegetative stage in which they, they shed some of their leaves or some of their parts and the parts happen to mix with organic matter or soil within the, the field which they are grown. At this stage, they can decompose easily and they also have some nutrients. However, these you will also note that the, 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 the amount of which they can fertilize depends on how well the initial soil in which they were grown was managed. We also have what we call as concentrated organic manures. These, they have higher, they have higher contents of nutrients than what we are calling as the bulky organic manures. They include oil cake, compost, and biofertilizers. Let us look at each one of these. Oil cakes usually are after, after you extract oil from oil seeds, the remaining portion is dried and is used as manure. Usually it has got, it has got very high macronutrient content. The other one is what we call as compost. Compost, we discussed about compost in large details in our previous classes, and it contains a mass of rotten organic matter from waste. It could be from the farm or from solid waste that has been collected in town, what we refer to as town compost. And usually you will notice that while composting, you concentrate the nutrients in one, in one region so that the result of compost has got very high content of nutrients required by plants. We also have what we call as biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are artificial preparations. They contain living cells or microorganisms and they help in the uptake of plant nutrients by the, by the crop. In fact, we ref they help in building of the O, the o and the A horizon, which are usually very important in ensuring that the nutrients are made available for plants, plant uptake and the soil structure is fine for water and air to pass through. However, most of these biofertilizers, examples being plant growth promoters, phosphorus mobilizers and phosphorus solubilizers and nitrogen fixers, they are commercially available. When I talk of Nitrogen fixers, they help to increase the amount of nitrogen available for the plant uptake. The same case for phosphorus solubilizers. They make sure that phosphorus is in a, its ionic form. The same case for phosphorus mobilizers. In its ionic form, it is the only way it can be taken up by the plant. 
They are also what we call as plant growth promoters. They ensure that there is speed, man, speedy maturation of your crops. However, you need to note that these are not, they are not agrochemicals. They are just preparations of living cells with efficient strains of microorganisms that help particular crops to grow and to ensure that nutrients are available for their uptake. The second approach in which we can do organic farming is through crop rotation and we have discussed crop rotation in previous classes. In this case, a farm is divided into portions and in each, each portion you rotate the crops you grow. For instance, look at this, this representation I have here. The farm has been divided into four portions. One where you grow legumes, another one you grow, you grow root crops, another one you grow leaves, leafy crops such as kumawiki, and another one you grow fruits. If you are to practice crop rotation, it means that you have to rotate each one of these kinds of crops in the various seasons that you plant, in the various growing seasons or planting seasons. The idea here of crop rotation is to ensure that pro crops such as nitrogen legumes that are good nitrogen fixers can leave the excess nitrogen that they have for crops such as root, root tubers that do not, are not capable of nitrogen fixing. And so is the other advantages. For instance, if they are fruit crops, some of them are able to ensure that there is no compaction in your farm. This characteristic will be left for the other crop and since you will be rotating it, it will construct your soil based on the various advantages. Then we have what we call the other aspect which we refer to as weed management as part of organic, organic farming. Usually, we use herbicides as to manage, to manage weeds. However, you will notice just as chemical fertilizers. They are able to pollute or they are in some cases, in a, some extreme cases, they resist their effect. They are not effective for crops, for some crops, what we are referring to as resistant to crop, to some plants or some plant species. So in organic farming, instead of using the commercial herbicides we know, we use a number of practices. These practices include allelopathy, allelopathy rotation, organic mulching, and integrated weed control. Allelopathy usually uses crops that have got allelochemicals or what we call as secondary metabolites in some pl plants that usually they are influence the growth of other crops, the growth of other crop plants. For instance, those who have been around this country have heard of the, the case of the Lake Victoria, these, these plants that grow in the Lake Victoria, they have the capacity to prevent the growth of any other aquatic crops or they also have the capacity to prevent the growth or the, and the maturation of fish. You also remember what in, in many of the news in the mainstream media, and you can go and look up for this, we have the crop that is normally in the Rift Valley, which is called the Mathenge. Initially, it was meant for, for ensuring that cr animals in the area have got adequate feed. However, once it was grown, it prevented the growth of all the other crops. Therefore, those are, are examples of crops that have got allochemicals. That is, they, they prevent the growth of other, other crops. For in this case, we use allelopathy to ensure that we are controlling the growth of a certain weed. And allelopathy, allelopathy cro promoting crops can only be effective if they are used as mulching for other food crops, if they are used, if they use these crops during crop rotation or if they intercrop the crops with other cr target crops or they use the crop e extracts as foliar spray, sp uh, foliar spray. When I talk of foliar spray, it is a spray you spray on the leaves of certain crops, not, not necessarily on the, on the stem or on the soil. You spray them on the, 
on the leaves. That is what we call as the foliar spray. spray. They are, can also use them by incorporating plant tissues in the soil. That is, during planting or during weeding, they can, de they can bury the allelopathic crops in the, within the soil so that their various chemicals can be taken up, can, can be within, can circulate within the soil and prevent the growth of weeds. We also have what we call as crop rotation, and these usually we use legume crops to provide nutrients through the nitrogen fixation processes. You can also rotate the various allelopathic crops to suppress the growth or prevent the growth of weeds. Usually, many farm practices, especially in this country, they have the monoculture, the monoculture culture, where they only grow maize, the next season you grow maize, and the next season, and the other season, and the other year, and the last 10 years. And this has a challenge in, in that it increases the vulnerability of your crop to weeds, pests, and diseases. And also, it is very difficult to maintain soil fertility under a monoculture. Therefore, you need to keep rotating the crops that you grow in, in the farm or do not fix the crops that you grow the, in the farm to a particular crop. The other practice we use to ensure that there are no weeds is what we refer to as organic mulching. Usually we use organic residues, straw, leaves, hay, among other products to ensure that, that there are no weeds that are growing in the areas that we have not planted our target crop. However, you need to understand that mulching is temporary and due to the processes of decomposition, it will disappear with time. Therefore, if you must ensure that at any one particular time that your farm has got organic mulch, you need to keep adding it. And some of the benefits as we have looked in previous classes of organic mulching include the, the addition of soil organic matter. They ensure that the soil has got high water retention. They also provide some nutrients once decomposition occurs. And our focus here is that they suppress the growth of weeds. Lastly, we also have what we call as integrated weed control. Integrated weed control can be done via two classes. One are the indirect methods and the other one is through the direct methods. Indirect methods are preventative methods as we have discussed. You prevent or avoid the growth of the weed. Then we have got the direct methods where we, we have got the weed here. We need to do something about it. And here is where we use the manual methods to remove, extract the weed from the crop. Mechanical methods where we use machines to ensure that they, they have removed all the possible weed, weeds in the crop. And we also have what we call as biological control where we use insects or other organisms to ensure that they do away with the weed. We also have what we call as insect, pest and disease management as part of organic farming. These usually include the use of agronomic practices, mechanical control, biological control, genetic control, and natural, na natural plant products. In agronomic control, you ensure that this is why we use agrochemicals or any other form that is natural but can ensure that the crop does not get pests and diseases. For instance, in the case we talked of crop rotation, some of the crop rotations, crops that you rotate, ensure that the plant you're growing is less vulnerable to insects and pests. It also ensures that the crop you had grown in the previous season is, since you have changed the location, then it will not be affected by pests as it was previously. The mechanical control is where we have used, you have said you use machines to detect the presence of insects or pests and other diseases and you take the necessary measures to remove them from, the, from your field, from your plant crop farm. The biological control measures is where we use other biological products. As has been the case, 
Some insects or some enzymes have been manufactured in the lab and have been used for disease and pests and disease management, disease, pests, and insect management. I don't want to dwell more on the biological control methods as they are not up to your stage. However, it is the use of biological products such as proteins, enzymes, microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi, and viruses to ensure that they do away with pests in your farm or they, they ensure they inhibit the existence, of, the existence of such pests and diseases in your farm. There is also what we are calling as genetic control. And this is also very complex, but commonly it is being adapted such that you do some maneuvers on the genetic material of your crop and the genetic material of the insect, pests, and diseases so that they are no longer compatible and hence, in a farm, they cannot exist together. We have also lastly discussed about the use of allochemicals, that they are natural plant products that in inhibit or promote the existence of a particular crop. I want you to take seriously the aspect of organic farming, as you know that in modern day, there is a lot of pollution that is existing, and therefore, Farmers are being encouraged to adapt to adapt to adopt organic farming as a measure to reduce the existent existing pollution either on land, on air, or on water. Remember when we talk of these agrochemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, the organic fertilizer, they have the capacity to release some of the greenhouse gases that we are having in our environment, for instance, carbon dioxide nitrous oxide and uh, methane of which are worsening the global global warming crisis therefore if you are a farmer or you are anticipating to to be a farmer the way to go is organic farming thank you